Hi, it's Katrina. From volcanoes about to erupt at any moment to giant eggs of a long-lost creature, here are 10 strange discoveries found in Antarctica. Number 10. Ice Tunnels Underneath one of the most remote outposts in the world, there is a network of tunnels cut into the ice. Amundsen Scott Station is a research hub that can house hundreds of researchers at a time with state-of-the-art technology. What people don't know is that underneath the station there is a network of tunnels carved out of the ice. They hold pipes for sewage, water, power, and heat. But station personnel have started going to the tunnels and carving out memorials and shrines in honor of their experiences there. There is a pig's head with glasses, plaques, gloves, notebooks, and all kinds of things people leave behind to honor their first winter or their time in this frigid place. One of the strangest things to be found in the tunnels is the body of an atrophied white sturgeon and a written account of its adventures. Russians gifted the fish to American scientists, who discarded it after it was in a freezer for several months. Then it was rescued from a trash dump and passed on around to stations in Antarctica where it now has its own shrine in the tunnels. Other parts of the tunnels are completely blocked off, and no one has any idea what is behind certain doors. And those who do, aren't saying anything. Number 9. Subglacial Volcano In 2013, scientists published an alarming study describing the first ever discovery of a subglacial Antarctic volcano. Found in the Marie Birdland Highland region, nobody knows when it will erupt, but when it does happen, it will create millions of gallons of water beneath the ice, many lakes full, according to a statement from study leader Doug Vines. He further explained that the eruption will send water gushing toward the sea and into a major ice stream, which drains Antarctic ice into the Ross Ice Shelf. The team discovered the volcano by accident when their equipment detected two series of small earthquakes in 2010 and 2011, between 15 and 25 miles below ground, near the boundary between the Earth's crust and the mantle. Based on their unusual depth, researchers concluded that the tremors were deep long period earthquakes, or DPLs, which have unknown causes but are known to happen in volcanic areas. They subsequently determined that a volcano lies beneath over half a mile of ice. Evidence shows that it sits atop land that the team believes is made up of previous erupted material, indicating that it has erupted before. A strong eruption would be required to breach the surface of the ice, but the underlying heated water would cause ice to travel to the sea faster. Thankfully, sea levels would not rise by much, and the volcanic activity would not cause the entire ice sheet to melt. And now for an abandoned base. But first, I want to say a big thank you to Michael Anderson and his daughter. Thank you so much for supporting Origins Explained. And if you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the Origins Explained family. Number 8. Leningradskaya Station For 20 years, from 1971 to 1991, Leningradskaya Station served as the Soviet Union's Antarctic base, where scientists studied meteorology, glaciology, oceanology, magnetism, and more. Built on a tall cliff by the 15th Soviet Antarctic Expedition on the Oats coast of the Victoria Land region, it regularly combated extreme winds, storms, and cold, which made life at the base far from comfortable and perhaps even dangerous. Consequently, icebreakers often got stuck for months during resupply missions, and it was incredibly expensive to operate the remote facility. The base was abandoned after the Soviet Union fell in 1991 due to financial difficulties, leaving the collection of buildings there vacant in the decades since. They were deserted as is, with the equipment and supplies, but researchers never returned there to continue their work. Russian authorities have entertained the idea of reopening the base and even sent icebreakers there at some point, but Leningradskaya station remains abandoned, although other facilities have been established nearby. Number 7. Long Lost Wallet While stationed in Antarctica in 1967 and 68, Navy meteorologist Paul Grisham lost his wallet. He cut his losses, moved on, and eventually forgot about it until 53 years later, when someone returned the 91-year-old's long-lost property. He received his missing wallet earlier this year, after someone discovered it while demolishing buildings at McMurdo Station, including the one Grisham stayed in during his time in Antarctica. Inside the wallet was a driver's license, a beer ration card, money order receipts from poker winnings he sent to his wife back in San Diego, a handwritten Kahlua liqueur recipe, and instructions for how to respond in the event of a nuclear, chemical, or biological attack. 
While stationed at McMurdo, Grisham worked grueling 12-hour on, 12-hour off days throughout the summer to prepare for the long, dark winter ahead. McMurdo Station was in what we called the Banana Belt. The temperature got up to about 25 degrees, and I've seen it as cold as minus 65, he told Channel 3000, adding it's almost inconceivable just how cold it is. It's almost impossible to describe to people who haven't been there. In fact, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how do we explain this to the folks at home, and we just never really came up with a good way to explain it. During what little downtime they had, Grisham and his colleagues passed the time by using the station's two-lane bowling alley, working out at the gym, and playing poker and chess. Would you be able to live in Antarctica? Would you give it a shot for six months? Let me know in the comments below. Number 6. Future Plants In recent years, scientists discovered evidence that West Antarctica was a lush temperate rainforest around 90 million years ago during the age of the dinosaurs standing in stark contrast to its current barren and frozen state. Practically nothing can live there now. Since it didn't have very much ice coverage, the continent's annual mean temperature was around 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Wildlife thrived, despite the four months of darkness that plagues Antarctica every year. At the time, the world was undergoing its warmest climate over the past 140 million years. As the Earth currently experiences rapid climate change, experts are looking into the possibilities that plants and insects could once again survive in certain parts of Antarctica. Professor Ian Hawes, an expert on Antarctica aquatic ecosystem, said that the warmest parts of Antarctica are beginning to merge towards the coldest parts of the sub-Antarctic, where we have much greater diversity of mosses, lichens, and flowering plants. He explained that organisms have a better chance of surviving the journey to the continent and after arriving as global temperatures rise. He says we should expect plants and small invertebrates from sub-Antarctic climates to start appearing in Antarctica. Eventually, rodents may make their way over there, although this will not likely happen for a long time. Some fish and crabs are already migrating southward toward Antarctica. While the climate is slowly becoming more hospitable to outsiders, it threatens to snuff out rare and fragile organisms found nowhere else on Earth. Scientists are still discovering new habitats throughout Antarctica, and may worry that any life forms within these environments will be wiped out before we ever even know about them. Number 5. Martian Mineral Science magazine recently reported the discovery of a rare Martian mineral rarely seen on Earth, beneath the Antarctic ice. Known as gerocyte, it is a yellow-brown mineral that requires water and acidic conditions to form, according to NASA. It is actually found in abundance on Mars. Scientists have long wondered how gerocyte became so plentiful on Mars, with some speculating that the planet was once covered in ice, facilitating the process necessary for it to form. Modern-day Mars no longer has the right conditions for it. The recently discovered presence of the mineral in Antarctica could help support this theory, according to a team of researchers who published a study earlier this year in the journal Nature Communications. Gerocyte typically occurs on Earth when mining waste is exposed to rain and air, and it also forms near volcano vents. The team, led by geologist Giovanni Bacolo, never expected to find it in Antarctica, but they did in trace amounts in the deepest layers of a mile-long ice core they extracted. Using an electron microscope, the researchers examined the particles and determined that the gerocyte formed within ice pockets, indicating that the gerocyte on Mars may have occurred the same way. Bacolo remarked that this is just the first step in linking deep Antarctic ice with the Martian environment. Mars and Antarctica have more in common than you may have thought. Number 4. Mummified Penguins In 2016, ornithologist Stephen Emsley discovered dozens of penguin corpses some long dead and mummified, others who appeared to be recently deceased, at Cape Irizar on the Scott coast of the Ross Sea. Rumors of guano or bird poop stains in the area got the scientists' attention because there were no active penguin colonies ever being recorded there in recent history. When he arrived, he quickly noticed the guano, and shortly thereafter, he found the birds. He said, in all the years I've been doing this research in Antarctica, I've never seen a site quite like this. The mummified birds were mostly chicks, and they belonged to Adelaide penguins, a coastline-dwelling species that builds nests using pebbles. Some of the dead penguins dated back between 800 and 5,000 years, revealing that the penguins had been very well preserved. Melting ice had recently exposed the deceased colony. The research findings show that there were three periods of penguin occupation at the site. 
The most recent colony fled during the 14th century, amid the onset of the Little Ice Age, but many were unable to reach the ocean because snow and ice blocked them in. Although it appears that no penguin colonies have nested at the site in quite some time, that may change in the future, according to penguin ecologist David Ainley, who told the New York Times that as global temperatures rise, small flocks of Adelaide's are increasingly seen wandering the area and occasionally nesting there. Rising temperatures and melting ice is more than likely going to reveal more clues of Antarctica's past in the future. Number 3. Fossilized Egg in 2011, Chilean scientists discovered a fossil egg resembling a deflated football on Seymour Island, off the Antarctic coast. Then it sat unidentified for nearly a decade in the collections of Chile's National Museum of Natural History. Dating back an estimated 68 million years, it likely belonged to a gigantic extinct marine reptile, perhaps a mosasaur, that lived during the time of the dinosaurs. The discovery, which was finally described in a study published last year, challenges the previously held notion that these types of creatures did not lay eggs. Measuring over 11 by 7 inches, it's the second largest egg on record, and it's also the first fossil egg found in Antarctica. It is from an animal the size of a large dinosaur, but it is completely unlike a dinosaur egg, said lead study author Lucas Legendre. It is most similar to the eggs of lizards and snakes but it is from a truly giant relative of these animals. Legendre estimated that the creature who laid the egg measured over 20 feet from its snout to the end of its body, tail not included. The fossil was found near baby mosasaur and plesiosaur skeletons, bolstering the theory that the egg belonged to an ancient marine reptile. Scientists are unsure whether the animal who laid the egg did so in the water or on land, although on land would have been difficult given the tendency for giant marine reptiles to be too heavy to support themselves out of water. But it's still possible, and the researchers are perplexed by the first-of-its-kind discovery. Number 2. Underwater Methane Leak Last year, researchers revealed the 2011 discovery of the first known underwater methane leak in southern Antarctica, beneath the Ross Ice Shelf. Methane is a greenhouse gas that is up to 25 times more capable than carbon dioxide of exacerbating climate change. In other places throughout the world, methane-eating microbes eat the gas spewing from leaks, preventing it from entering the atmosphere. But in the case of the Antarctic methane leak, these microbes took five years to react to the leak and did not entirely consume the gas, according to a recently published study on the matter. This delayed methane consumption is not good news, marine ecologist Andrew Thurber told The Guardian. He further explained that because methane leaks in general are difficult to find, their impacts on climate change are not well studied, especially in Antarctica. Thurber and his colleagues visited the site repeatedly following its discovery and noticed after five years that the leak was still spewing, although methane-eating microbes had appeared. Since most climate models factor in these microbes as a way to keep methane leaks in check, Thurber referred to the finding as incredibly concerning. For years, the leak has been flowing into the Ross Sea and the atmosphere in general. On its own, this is not significantly damaging to the climate, but researchers suspect that there may be more methane leaks in the water surrounding Antarctica. If they behave similarly to the one that scientists know about, it could upend their understanding of the impacts that methane leaks have on the environment and warrant a complete restructuring of climate models. Number 1. Human-Sized Penguin between 37 and 40 million years ago, penguins taller than the average modern human roamed Antarctica, according to a 2014 study by a team of researchers from the La Plata Museum in Argentina. Dubbed the Colossus penguin, the fossil used for the research is the most complete fossil ever found in Antarctica. From toe to beak tip, these gargantuan birds stood roughly six and a half feet tall and weighed nearly 255 pounds but some experts cautioned that because prehistoric penguins were proportioned much differently than modern species, these measurements may not be precise. Either way, the Colossus penguin was much bigger than the largest currently existing species, the Emperor penguin, which stands at roughly 3.6 feet tall and weighs just under 110 pounds. The Colossus penguin dove underwater in search of food for up to 40 minutes at a time a surefire advantage over smaller species who could not spend nearly as much time underwater. Found in La Meseta Formation on Seymour Island, the fossil comes from a place where, during prehistoric times, the climate was warmer and anywhere between 10 to 14 penguin species shared the Antarctic coastline. More human-sized penguin fossils were discovered in 2017 in southern New Zealand, one of the closest countries to Antarctica. 
The newly discovered species, the Kumimanu penguin, was slightly smaller than the Colossus penguin, measuring around 5.8 feet tall and weighing around 220 pounds. It lived around 55 million years ago during the Paleocene epoch, making it even older than the Colossus penguin. Both massive penguins likely lived during a time when both Antarctica and New Zealand were warmer. They shared the environment with other seabirds as well as sharks and turtles. The Kumimanu penguin went extinct around 20 million years ago, after large marine creatures, including toothed animals like seals and whales, entered the ecosystem. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to learn about more fascinating Antarctic discoveries, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon. Bye!